show gaming dad 101 goes live each and every single week as a podcast on podcast services all over the world and you can find us as a youtube video each and every single friday on youtube of course joining me today is my co-host ricky what's going on everybody all right everybody so ricky welcome back man it's another week what have you been up to man dude it feels like forever (laughs) i feel like i've had a mini vacation throughout this whole this whole thing i know we recorded last week's episode a little bit early and luckily luckily for us there wasn't really any news um there was a lot of april fool stuff that i almost like fell for there was that uh nintendo direct (laughs) that you had sent me and my original response from ign's direct was like i didn't realize that it was a joke at first i'm not gonna lie i was like of course nintendo would plan a direct the day after we record an episode so that we can't talk about it. Of course they would announce it. Like, what the hell, man? And then I I watched it. And as I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, my God, no way. This game's coming to Switch. And then I saw the second game, and I was like, wait a minute. This is an add-up. All right, this is weird already. And then as I'm watching it, I'm like, this this, this has a weird vibe. What's going on? I looked at my phone, and I realized it was April Fool's. I was like, oh, damn it, man. I was really excited, so too. Did you, did you like that Red Dead Redemption uh, Switch? <laughs> I like the announcer. <laughs> and he's just, like, freaking having an aneurysm. He's just, like, shaking his head, like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's freaking wonderful, man. It was yeah. great. No, I, I liked it. It was awesome. And it was good to see um, some of the April Fool's jokes that there were this year. Because mm-hmm. you always, every year that you see, I like to see who falls for what. <laughs> You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And yeah, this year I uh I, I almost fell for the switch. <laughs> the, I, I did whatever. see another uh Dude, it was everything I would have ever wanted. It was like every <laughs> single Zelda and I'm just like, oh my god, it's for me. It's it's a direct for me. No, I did see uh, another uh Nintendo I, I don't know why, but they were going against Nintendo for all this April Fool's jokes because I saw another one that they made um by a YouTuber and they created a Switch Online Deluxe. Uh, <laughs> package Dang, what what's the deluxe about it basically everything that's missing from the regular <laughs> online oh. service nice. so they were like so you have everybody looking for every what was it uh oh yeah i was talking about you know everybody's been craving it's like oh if you're gonna bring you know the regular s and or nes games or nes games yeah. you know, to the switch as a online service you should do the yeah i know right you should do the SNES or you should do the Nintendo 64 or GameCube or blah, 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 blah. And um, basically they come out like, nope, we're coming out with the Virtual Boy. <laughs> oh, God. The <laughs> Virtual all, Boy Mini. That would have been great. All four games included. <laughs> all four games. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? Oh, like, that's great. So, you know, the, the Joy-Con hand grip. Um, that you just basically slide on, you know, Joy Cons on that comes with the actual Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, they had one. It's like, oh, this one comes with integrated microphone, so you no longer have to use your cell phone. I'm like, that's actually a smart idea. <laughs> they actually do that. <laughs> but yeah, no, they just came up with like a bunch of different things. I'm like, I would truly that I would buy that if it was because of it. <laughs> Some of it was like nonsense, but. It was a lot. Funny. A lot of it is nonsense when it comes to these April Fool things, but it's really fun to see it. Um, and then you did remind me, but you know what? I'm gonna put that at the end of the show. That's gonna be one of my recommendations. <laughs> remind me, I have a recommendation. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Now that we've done this in in the show, during the show, to make sure we remember about the show, let's move on <laughs> with the show. So, each and every single week, we go to Ricky to tell us the reasons why we're broke. So, Ricky, why would we go broke this week? Man. My pocket hurting. Your pocket's hurting this week? It's, what? it's hurting. What, what I are mean, we buying, man? Apparently, so during the last episode, I'll admit, the one um, website that I get all my information from mm-hmm. was a little bit out of date. So oh, I fine. found a new, yeah, I found a new website. So hold on. So you mean to tell me that on the last episode that I told you, Ricky, did you look for the games? And you're like, there is no games. You mean there was actually games, Ricky? Well, <laughs> on the website that I have... <laughs> 
So everybody knows I do have I'm a website saved. I'm only giving you crap because if you gave me crap no, during no. the second take. Um, so yeah, I have a website saved that gives me all the other games, but I saved it like at the beginning of the year. So obviously not every single game that has now been announced ever since I saved that link. We're at they hadn't obviously. upgraded that link, yeah. Exactly. So I That's found another shame. one. So I'm going back at least to the beginning of the month. So I'm going to give you all everything right. from April 1st all the way to the 13th. Sweet. So starting it off, we had a Bomber Crew Complete Edition come out for the PS4 and the Switch on April the 2nd. Right. We have Darksiders uh, War Master Edition that came out for the Switch on April the 2nd. Sweet. I know, right? We have um, Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission coming out for the Switch and PC on April the 5th. We what? have... Dangerous Driving coming out for the PS4 and Xbox One on April the 9th. We have Neo Atlas 1469 coming out for the Switch on April the 9th. We have Ace Attorney Trilogy coming out for PS4. <laughs> Emma. Sorry, right. guys. Chris is over right. here. It's like, yeah! Yes! I love Ace Attorney. Like, you oh, don't really? understand. Like, oh my god, they're so good. If you have not played these games, get them. They are incredibly good. It's coming to what? PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Get it for the Switch. <clears throat> okay. okay. This game, realistically, these, these games aren't going to push the PlayStation or Xbox. You don't need that power. And realistically, these games are... Uh, in my opinion, better built for a mobile market because these okay. games are from the for the DS. So Phoenix Wright was a series um, where you're basically an attorney and you're solving crimes and like you watch these crimes kind of happen like on a TV show, but then you have to interrogate people, you have to get answers, and you have to try to solve the case and 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 acquit your um, your pa not your patient, excuse me, your client. <laughs> Day job and night job are getting completely mixed in together. I, think. <laughs> I see that. So, um, uh, your client. So you're an attorney. You're basically trying to prove that they didn't murder somebody or they didn't steal something. I, there's a whole mess of different scenarios. They're really, really good games. If you have not checked them out, I highly recommend them. And I really do recommend them that you get them for the Switch. Uh, I had actually heard of this collection coming out. And I got super excited, but I hadn't realized that it was on the Switch. I thought it was only on PS4 and Xbox. Um if that's all you have, still get it. It is worth it. I don't even do you know do you know what the price is, uh, Ricky? No, but I do have my switch with me that I can look it up while I'm talking. So yeah, go ahead and look it up. Like honestly, like I really highly recommend these games. Uh, the first one was really good. The second one was okay. The third one though was very strong hitting. Um, there was one point. See what excites this is what excites me about this. All right, and this is why I want to tell everybody to kind of get it. <laughs> Because these games are really good, they're very well developed, and I have a feeling, and I've, and I've listened to other shows where they've talked about this too, and I feel like what they're doing is really testing. If you've noticed, there's a lot of developers that are putting out small experiences on the Switch, and depending on how they do, they're going back and doing more stuff for the Switch, and more games are coming to the Switch, and that sort of thing. So what I think is going to happen is they're trying to measure how people will receive these types of games to come out with a new one. But here's the kick, and here's the other part. So there's another series called Professor Layton. <laughs> All right? Okay. Yes, that's also for the DS series, and it's really good. It's it's just puzzle. It's like a puzzle game, and it's like a narrative puzzle game. Um, really freaking awesome, really quaint, really super. I love it. There's a point where they actually crossed, and it was a Professor Layton and Phoenix Wright game that came off of the DS that I still have not played. <laughs> and that's what I want. That's my end goal. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's my goal. that game and more, because it really it's a really good series. Go check it out. If you check it out and, and, and you don't like it, I'm not giving you your money back, but you can come <laughs> fight about it over on our Facebook group, all right? But really, really recommend it. Um, and, and they're actually – the theme of them is not necessarily for children since, since you know, we do have dads listening. If you're thinking, of, oh, this is something for my kid, it might be dependent on their age to so take a look at that. Um, the good news is that there's plenty of information out there, and I'm sure that there's videos on YouTube uh, for the DS versions that you can check out, and it will give you exactly of an idea of what it is. Um, check it out. Buy it. Support it. I want yeah. a new one. <laughs> Everybody that's curious for it, like you, Chris, um, the game is actually uh, 29 I am getting it. <laughs> well, well the price but, okay. <laughs> so, disclaimer, we're recording the episode the day before it airs, so we're recording on April the 9th. The game is currently out as of today, so you can actually go and buy it as of right now. 
it is 30 bucks. <laughs> so for those on the audio podcast, uh, Chris just grabbed the switch from behind the shelf behind him. We could hear it. And he is turning it on, bad. going to the <laughs> menus to go and actually buy the game. Now he's modeling the switch. Oh, God. <laughs> this is my switch. These are not my Joy-Con. <laughs> my Joy-Con are charging over here. <laughs> Anyway, but yeah. well, so well, Chris looks like he's gonna actually go buy the game right now. It is thirty bucks, twenty nine ninety nine for those that want that's, it. That's not bad. That's ten bucks a game, Ricky. It is ten dollars a game. All right. It is. I'm mm. actually thinking about getting the Final Fantasy um seven on the Switch because it's. I've also, I've been debating that one too. I've done the same thing. But so, moving forward with the yes, games I was about coming to say, out. Let's get back. No, I didn't interrupt you, sorry. Uh, we have <laughs> Senki Zero Last Beginning coming out for the PS4 and PC on April the 9th. We have Earth Defenders Force Iron Rain coming out for the PS4 on April the 11th. We have Nintendo Lavo um, VR Kit. Obviously, that's for the Switch on April the 12th. And then we it's have... And then we have uh, Konami Arcade Classics coming out for the um, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC on April the 13th. And obviously that's going to be like all your classic, um, you know, Sony or what is it? Uh, Sony games? Konami? I don't know. Like, what, all like the of... PlayStation games? I mean, I'm assuming it would be like all the classics from Konami, like the major... Ta- Do you... Hold on. Konami Arcade. I'm surprised that it didn't have the list of games. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is... I wonder if it... No. No, it has going to have PlayStation. Yeah, all the Konami series, basically. Yeah, it's got the entire Konami series, regardless of console. Anything... Is it for, Is it the 80s collection? Uh, I believe it's the 80s collection. All right. If not, let us know over at a Facebook group, because we are curious. So that does it. Is that it for this week? Uh, yep, that is it for this week. I mean, how much more do you want? <laughs> I mean, we're playing I mean, broke with that 30 bucks trilogy already. I mean, realistically, I'm looking at this, and there's like there's there's like three games that I would totally get. <clears throat> like, I'm just I'm just letting you know, whatever. I'm gonna be broke. I mean, so, I, I will say, looking at the when I was looking at the Ace game yeah. one, I saw the the Dragon Ball uh hero one right below it that kind of mm-hmm. look kind of interesting at least the image portion but i'll move over i'll look into that later you've been burned by dragon ball before that's all i'm yes. saying no i have <laughs> i have i will not be doing it <laughs> fair enough all right let's go ahead and get into the news and we're going to start with a big one ricky we've talked a lot about the digital future we've talked a lot about streaming <laughs> and we've talked a lot about companies and the brick and mortar going away and then we hear that for the 52 weeks that ended in february gamestop reported that their sales uh went down three percent to 8.29 billion uh which is a loss from the previous year of 673 million dollars and then the part that is the most interesting to me is that this figure is after they had a seven hundred million dollar sale of the Spring Mobile chain uh, that they, they they successfully completed. So they still went down six hundred and what was it seventy three million, mm-hmm. even I'm... though they had that sale of seven hundred. Like that's a pretty big chunk, man. Like <clears throat> GameStop's not going away overnight. Clearly, they, they're still no. making good amount of money but that's that's a hard hit to take that is i mean Dude, but a like, lot of people are also mad at gamestop just because of the past you know the way that they've decided to handle you mean the 30 cents you get for a game that you just purchased for 45 and that they sell for 40 not yeah pretty much and then basically uh what was it the circle of life um thing that they had going on or circle life i forgot how it, the name was that the program was oh, but basically they were yeah. pushing for they were making extra copies of new games selling them as used they would have copies of brand new games tell you that no they do not have any brand new games available they only have mm. used copies <clears throat> so yeah they to try to drive copy. the used sales so that they would yeah. be able- yeah, I remember that. So, we talked about that on, on the show. Yes, we did um, a while back, and several episodes ago. But oh, yeah, yeah, so it's, it's just, I mean, again, it's things like that. You know, I, I understand why they do it. You know, 
for example, this would probably drive, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing some crazy marketing scheme that they try to do now, try to recover that lost money. But I mean, if you go to their stores, <clears throat> they're mostly a thing geek now. Like, yeah. sure, you can get games and stuff, but like a good, like, for example, my GameStop by my house is a good 45 to 50 percent think geek. You know what I mean? It's like like almost that much of it is just it's just collectibles and pop figures and things of that nature, which is awesome, Same and I love mine. it. But it's not it's not GameStop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like at this point, it's I feel here's the sad thing. I, the the part that I don't want to see lose from GameStop is the fact that we can get the used games and we can save money that way. I love the fact that I can take my physical media and turn it into something, but at the same time, I feel like the ultimate goal is going to be lowering the price of games because you're cutting out the middleman if, mm -hmm. if you have direct distribution. <clears throat> so the, is it good news? Is it bad news? What do you think? I mean, it's 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 on both sides. You know, if they keep going the way that they're going and they keep losing money the way that they are. It's definitely a bad thing. Um, if they rethink, again, it's always rethinking their strategy. If they rethink everything and try to go back to what they used to be and be more game centric, um, it could probably turn into a positive for them and probably, you know, take on those big distributors like Amazon and online shoppers and all that stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll see what more comes of GameStop and what's you know going to happen and if it's going to die if it's going to succeed or what all ultimately it is going to do <clears throat> let's go ahead and go to the next article if i'm not being attacked by my dog and my cell phone would actually like open <laughs> <clears throat> so um we actually got news of a rumor <clears throat> that would go hand in hand with the rumored xbox one all digital edition <clears throat> all right Switch Xbox. What happened? Huh? Not the... What? <clears throat> Listen, Ricky. Xbox the Switch Xbox. Xbox is a dream, all right? <laughs> it's a fever dream of a madman. <laughs> it's an interesting, beautiful dream, but it's the fever dream of a madman. It's not going to happen. Uh, it's okay. Everybody also make fun of Albert uh, Einstein and... If they announce it, I will take you to a steak dinner, all right? I owe you a steak dinner, all right? Like... We're going to have to start making bets or something on, <laughs> on our predictions just to make them interesting. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Hey, but, I, can't, I can't help if I'm hopeful, okay? Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help if I'm a positive person. Uh, so, the rumor, it's pretty interesting. <clears throat> Xbox Games Pass is rumored to coming be coming out with an ultimate subscription, uh, mm -hmm. where apparently it's going to be $14.99 a month. And it's I'm gonna getting it. The Games Pass and Xbox Gold. That's it. You got me at fourteen ninety nine, man. Fourteen ninety nine comes out to one hundred and eighty dollars a year. I don't. It's not really savings, but it's nice that it's bundled. I mean, crap. are you doing the Are you doing the math? Pretty much, I am really doing the math because right now I'm paying what I said ten. I well, it's paying. seventy dollars for the year, correct? 20 times 12, I'm paying $240 right now because I'm paying the monthly subscription, which is 10 bucks, and then the other monthly subscription, which is 10 bucks, I'm paying 140 bucks. Okay, but if you get the yearly subscription, and this is the part where I'm trying to like, I feel that they, they, the rumor is the monthly, and the monthly doesn't sound too bad, but I, I feel that there could be improvement on a yearly, and that's the, what I'm curious about. I'm the type of person that would like that likes to do a year subscription as opposed to a monthly, um, and I think that there could be a lot of savings there. But right now, Xbox Gold for a year is seventy dollars, correct? Yes. Okay. No, say uh, sixty. Sixty? Yes. Fifty nine ninety nine. Uh, ten uh, nine ninety nine. That's for the month, though. You got it. That's for the month and for the day. It, there's no discount, no inflation. It's sixty bucks for really? the year. Yep. All right. Well. All right. So sixty bucks for the year, and then you're looking at nine ninety nine, right, for Games Pass mm -hmm. times twelve. All right. So that's one hundred and seventy nine ninety eight, which is basically the exact same price of just bundling them together for the monthly. So. It's not really a savings. It's just the convenience of doing them both at once. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm like, is this really news? Is this like, 
<laughs> like, is this really the rumor? Is there going to be more to it? Are you going to be offering me something better? Are you going to be offering me a better deal for the yearly? Like, I mean, it's going to be... <laughs> if there's more to offer than what Xbox Live and Games Pass have to offer right now, I'll be mind blown. <laughs> My mind will be blown if you can offer me even more. I don't know how... I don't even know what else I will want from Xbox... I point. just I want them both combined, and I would like it to be like 150 for the year, so that I am saving something. There you go. So that that's what I personally would like. So let's go ahead and move on to the next news. The next news is very interesting, and I'm glad to hear. And it's actually it actually makes my heart happy, man. So Team Meat, the makers of Meat, the creators of Meat Boy, um, have come out with a statement in regards to their newest game. Uh, they state. They said in a statement, quote, we've been knocking out the last bits of Super Meat Boy forever at record speeds while keeping a healthy and sustainable pace. Rather than sacrificing our minds, our bodies and social lives, we plan to maintain its current pace, which means we will not hit our April 2019 release. Team Meat isn't some studio owned by an evil asshat corporation that has say over what we do and how we do it. We are fortunate enough to have control over how we work and we choose to not run ourselves into the ground. That's awesome. All right? <laughs> That's okay. So it sucks. So here's the sucky part. You're not getting the game this April. Woohoo. Boo woo. Whatever. Considering all the reports that we've talked about on the show for the past, so I don't know, year or some change, that I've been negative on a whole mess of studios that surprise you, it's awesome to see a studio come out and be like, hey, you know what? We're not going to make it. Sorry. Like, <laughs> well, you know you like, you know you want it. We technically could, but we're not going to kill ourselves. And I kind of respect that a lot. You know what I mean? Like, I, I know that it sucks, and I know that the younger gamers out there that are looking forward to this game are probably bitching, but this is good. This is good for the industry. This is good for their mental health. This is great to see. You know, it's better to see a company like this saying, hey, we're not going to make it, but the it, the game's still just around the corner. Keep your eyes your, your eyes and uh, ears out because it's coming, but we're going to – we're not going to kill ourselves. Well, our our employees are more important than than this game and the profitability of this game, as opposed to, EA, you know. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> screw you. Me. For, yes, you for not you? not reading the update that I made on the on the docket. <laughs> <laughs> so what, for those that are looking part? at the yeah, so the <laughs> <laughs> so for those that are watching the video, they were seeing me like ha ha shh making all these faces and everything. See if you actually read it, but he skipped it, so ignore my faces. <laughs> so for anybody who doesn't know, so here here's the deal. <clears throat> anybody who's looking at my sh on my phone, the problem is I can't get my laptop to be within eye level, right? And I don't like looking <laughs> down because it looks like I'm not looking at everybody. So I feel like it's easier for me to look at what our show docket is. Basically, it's just the outline of what we're going to talk about on the show. And there's, of course, little clues here and there just in case I lose my train of thought. Um, and it's one of those where I never really read it. I always know what's on it. But if I lose my train of thought, I can look down and I can find my spot quickly because that's where I have, you know, key points. This, this, this jerk right here, <laughs> putting in random information throughout the docket to see if it'll mess me up. What the hell? <laughs> hey, man, I got to make this show fun, okay? Hosting but, 101. <laughs> yes. No, but uh, back to the topic. Um, I will definitely say this this type of developers, those are the type of developers that, I, that I'm really willing to support. Because not only you're looking out for your employees and you actually care about them and their health being, you know, their mental being, their health and all that stuff, but you also don't think about just pushing out a game that you know it's not 100% completed or something. Yes, you're not so, fixing it with a patch. You're not exactly. Doing you want to give us that full experience from the very get go. So things, you know, small things like that actually do go a long way. And those are the things that I do appreciate from developers. So yes, I am not a, I, I will say I, I own uh, Super Meat Boy, the original one. Yep. I suck at that game. I have not passed <clears throat> the first level. Hey, yep. So I don't like Super Meat Boy, not because it's a bad game. It's just because I'm terrible at it. Exactly. So even I've though I probably I won't play this game, 
I will probably still support it in some kind of way. I'll probably buy it just to have it. You're gonna lie. This is kind of like that whole gearbox situation. I like them doing this so much. I may just buy it just to support them. Yeah, pretty much. Just to so. be like, you know what? Smart move. I like that. It's one of those where there's a lot of shoes. There's a lot of shoes that I listen out there, and they're always they're always like vote with your wallet. This is one of those reasons. This is one of those times that I feel compelled. You know, I'm going to vote with my wallet and be like, yeah, dude, like, I like that you have this environment rolling. And I think other studios should take things up like this. Mm -hmm. And sure, it'll suck that whatever game you're looking forward to <clears throat> is slightly delayed. But if it's going to be a better quality game, who wouldn't, who wouldn't want a better quality game? Exactly. You know and what I mean? That's, uh, I, you got me on that one. <laughs> I, that's that's how I try. I've been burned many times by other company. <laughs> by which company? Me, the Meat Boy Industries? No, 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 not not Meat Boy. Just okay. other companies that are never. Team, sorry, Team Meat, not Meat Boy Industries. Why do I call Meat Boy? I'm, I don't know. They have a very interesting name. Ha, so, ha, ha. Not, yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so and then. We have news. Apparently, a world record has been beaten in Doom. Uh, apparently, this is a record. You posted this one, Ricky. What what got your attention on this one? Looking for news. <laughs> if you really want to be honest, we were, we were lower honest. news this going uh, week. Now, um, I thought you were like a huge fan of Doom because here's the thing. I love Doom. I actually was a huge fan of the original, but I didn't know there was a speedrun community based oh, yes. off of the first level and that the record is nine seconds? Yes, and this record made it down to eight seconds. So Jeez. it's the thing that actually caught me to it is because this type of records, not only do they have it in extra hard, they try to go with the mechanics that the actual game pushes out to you, so it's not modded or anything. So for somebody that held the record for 22 years at the nine second mark and for somebody to go ahead and beat that level in eight seconds should be a whole entire second off i mean you got to give them props you do and that's 22 years like that's yes. that's the part that gets me man yes the fact it, that this record was untouched for that long like mm -hmm. and the thing about it is that there is very minimal error um whenever you're doing this specific level so he had it like on the hardest level that you can have and because the map is the i guess their biggest map for speed run and it ends up being at nine seconds um you have a lot of random enemies spawning everywhere so you have a very very limited um area that you can actually go so not all the times you're going to have a straight line that you're going to be able to run through because you're just going to have a random enemy just spawn in front of you and you just have minimal errors that you have to do to be able yeah. to pass it so for you to be able to was, do that i was talking looking into it apparently it's also built so that it's very random too so it's not yes. like you can like plan everything nope so you're able to do that and just wing it and still shave a second off props to you man Dude, for real. All right. So for the last news article, it's actually more of like, a, hey, go go get these while they're hot. So we talked about some games that are on sale uh, for the Switch. The Switch is actually having a sale from the 11th to the 25th. So if you're listening to this episode, the sale starts tomorrow. Um, Super Mario Odyssey is going to be 33% off. Elder Scrolls Skyrim, 50% off uh, so that you can buy it for yet another version. Uh, Mario Rabbids Kingdom <laughs> Paddle is off 50%. Uh, Breath of the Wild is 30% off. L.A. Noir is 66. Xenoblade Chronicles is 33. Crash Bandicoot: The Insane Trilogy is 34% off. Diablo 3 is 30% off. Monster Hunter is 42% off. Octopath Traveler is 33% off. Dark Souls Remastered is 30% off. The Wolfenstein 2: The New Colossus is 33, and then Doom is 50% off. Uh, and then they also have some sales for the 3DS. Uh, Super Smash Brothers, uh, Majora's Mask is 33% off, and then the new Super Mario Brothers 2 is also 33% off. So if you're looking for a Nintendo Switch games and you're looking for a bargain, these are really good games at a very good sale. Now, one thing I will say, this is actually for the Europe <clears throat> market. Um, is it only for the European market? I thought yeah, it was applied for the American market no, as well. No, it's, it's not sure if it's coming to the North America market. But the good thing with the Switch that I wanted to remind everybody, you can actually create different regions mm. if you just create a brand new... That's true, true. Yeah, if you just create a brand new login, uh, just select the European region and you'll be able to get access to all of those games. Fair enough. All right, so before we get out 
with the show. I actually have a discussion topic I'd like to kind of get your uh, feedback on, and this is actually one that is actively going on our Facebook right now, because uh. in true in true gaming dad fashion, <clears throat> we uh, we forgot to post it until the very last second before recording. Now, this is something <laughs> that I do want everybody to keep participating on. So if you're listening to the show and you're not part of our Facebook group, go join us over at our Facebook. The address is actually somewhere down on the video, somewhere down there, I believe it is, because I'm very bad at remembering where these things are. So go check us out over on Facebook and go talk to us about it. You can submit cheat codes. You can submit all sorts of news. You can give us feedback on the show. You can fight with me about that episode, the, uh, the game earlier if you don't like Phoenix, right? <laughs> I'll take you on, sucker. We'll argue. And basically, this week's topic is based off of uh, something that's kind of been sweeping the community. The director of God of War, Corey Barlog, came out in a statement in regards to accessibility in video games and making games uh, simple. So it, it having like an easy mode. And apparently he's quoted as saying, accessibility has never and will never be a compromise to my vision. To me, accessibility does not exist in contra in contradistinction to anyone's creative vision, but rather it is an essential aspect of any experience you wish to be enjoyed by the greatest number of humans as possible. Barlog explains on, on Twitter that something can be both difficult and have a good suite of accessibility features. So this is kind of a two-part question. <clears throat> um, and part of the reason why I'm saying this is that, of course, it got, I mean, we've talked about him before, Steven Spog uh, was the CEO of Able Gamers. It's, it's a very big... Um, charity for disabled gamers that helps them with controllers that helps them with uh, setups uh it, it you know all sorts of things so go check them out if you're looking for a charity to donate to they're a great cause and of course he came out talking about how you you do need these sorts of accessibilities built into a game so that people that have disabilities can also enjoy it uh just because there's an easy mode doesn't mean that it's going to affect the players uh and that sort of thing so there's of course been the argument over the internet because everybody knows how the internet is of whether there should be an easy mode for accessibility, whether there shouldn't be an, an easy mode for accessibility, whether it's one of those cases where the two aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. Uh, so I kind of wanted to get your take, Ricky. I did ask the question on Facebook and we did get some of those. If you haven't didn't get a chance to put your topic on there and we haven't we weren't able to read it on the show, feel free to go ahead and do so. We're probably gonna revisit this topic next week on next week's episode, uh, if enough people do continue to comment, because I am very curious. So 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 what do you think? First and foremost, is an easy mode, does that equate accessibility for disabled people or should there be different, is there a difference? No, not really. I mean, uh, it's a good question. Um, <laughs> and that's kind of why I wanted to talk about it because, and, and this is, you know, I, I didn't read his statement and part of that is honestly because um, I was trying to pull up the tweet, but yeah. the, the Stephen Pog tweeted, and I actually retweeted it if anybody that follows me on Twitter. Uh, he's, he said, based on the article, that there were tweets like that that scare him. Uh, you have someone with a large platform yelling developers shouldn't waste their time on adding difficulty levels because it's quote-unquote not accessibility. Yes, it is. Also, we do many things to make books accessible, including audio and braille and audio formats. And this is like in relevance to somebody using a All book right. as a, you know what I mean? Um, he spent years fighting alongside uh, my accessibility allies, reasoning with the public that accessibility is not the enemy. Some people need difficulty levels, difficulty options to be able to enjoy a video game. And if those options don't hurt you, why would you stop them? Mm -hmm. Now, spoiler alert, I'm actually on his side. <laughs> <laughs> like, I believe I believe in the sanctity of difficulty of mm -hmm. games, and I do enjoy games that are difficult. However, I don't necessarily feel that putting in an easy mode or something that, that would make it more accessible to other players takes away from the game. And, and, and no. this is the whole, like, this is the biggest part of the debate, you know? So, so, so what do you think before we get over to what's happening over on our Facebook? Because I, I think <laughs> I actually have to, we may need to put a stop to it. I don't know. There's... <laughs> It's starting to get a little heated. I don't know. Oh, really? I haven't even looked it's, in there. It's, it's getting oh, interesting. <laughs> oh, God. I haven't even looked in there. I'm scared now. No. Um, no, honestly, there. if you really think about it, there's a lot of people, yes, out there with disabilities that do play video games. But in turn, it doesn't mean that you have to make a game easy just for them. So we can go along the lines of... Are we doing it just because we're feeling bad that they're disabled and we feel like they need 
uh, you know, a leg up, you know, to be able to play some of these games, to be able to pass some of these games, because there's plenty of videos out there, there's plenty of, you know, spokespersons that have disabilities that go through life you doing things that we can even do that are fully capable of doing anything that we would want to do. So adding, making the excuse that just because they're disabled, they would need a, an easy mode. Um, it's uh, it, the problem. Yeah. The problem with this See question I mean? really is that you can't, it's hard to base it without you having a disability. You know exactly. what I mean? It's hard to understand what they go through. And I come from a perspective of if I made a game, right? And and, and granted, not everybody's going to think the way that I, I do. But if I made a game and I put it out there, I want everybody to try it. I want everybody to check it out. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like this show, I want everybody to check it out. I hope that people watch our show, listen to our show, enjoy our show. I don't care how old you are. I don't care whether you're a dad or not. I don't care if you're married or single. I don't care if you're black or white. I don't care if you're man or woman. I don't. I just don't care. I want you to enjoy the content. So with that, I would feel that making a game would kind of be the same thing. And while I understand that creators like you know that the the studio, the studio that makes Bloodborne and, and and makes all of these games and Dark Souls and and and, and um, you know Sekiro, I love that that is like its own genre and I love that there's like a hardcore audience for that. But I don't think that adding different modes of accessibility so that other people can actually get through the game and and, and actually do it would be bad. I, I kind of no. feel that realistically you could maintain to an extent the same level of challenge but with lower level you know what i mean like i feel that you could have an easy mode that isn't necessarily easy but it is better than the other ones for the people that would kind of need it you know Correct. And, and and that's the part like granted yes it does take additional resources it does but at the same time you're kind of widening the audience that you're getting and i'm gonna use celeste as an example it's a, oh my god, that is excellent example. Yes. Please carry on. So, yeah, Celeste is a type of game that is pretty comparable to Super Meat Boys. You go through a level that you have to be, you have limited um, abilities on playing the normal mode. The game is hard. You know, they do give you the options like, hey, you can add this to the games to make the game easier for you but at the same time you can at least enjoy the story of what we're trying to do within this game so to me making a game that is hard that's fine you can cater to those type of you know people that love those hard games like you do to me i am not a gamer that loves hard games to me i barely have time to be able to play a video game so all i really want to do is enjoy the game go through the levels i want to see exactly yes. what you got to offer for me you know my daughter sees me playing some of this game so she does get interested in the art that the game is providing for you yeah so me being able to again use celeste because it was one of those games that i did play and i let my daughter play I put it on a mode that basically you become invincible, you can't die, you can walk everywhere where you can do, but guess what? My daughter was able to pass the level and she enjoyed the game. And so, it, yes, and, and that's that's another perspective to look at it okay. from. It's something that we can share, for example, with our children. <clears throat> like think about it. Celeste, your daughter, you let her play because it had an option that made it more accessible to her to be able to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Correct? What would happen if that wasn't there? She wouldn't be able to play it. And nope. to an extent, because of her age, she does have the limitations. Now, granted, they are kid prodigies that are gamers from like two, three years old. <laughs> We're not talking about your not bad mine. parenting. I'm just playing. Uh, not mine. mine no, not, by not far. Ours. But my point is that how nice is that? Like that that's also from, from our perspective as parents, it's nice because yes, we could potentially play a game that our children can then play and they can still have a challenge with it, but something that is more accessible to their needs and something that they're able to enjoy. I think that's awesome. So I don't know, but, and it is that whole debate because yes, it takes more time, but you have more people and it's, 
it's it's kind of a kerfuffle and and i really like i i don't have the solution you know i i i do feel personally and i do feel that that it should be something that's included but i also feel that we shouldn't force developers to do it (laughs) you know what i mean and again also developers are making something that they had a vision so you can't blame them for them wanting to for them wanting you to try something the way that they vision it so that's one thing that everybody also has to remember yeah. um same thing you can go to a restaurant you know i'll use food as an example as well you know there is a restaurant that if you ask for ketchup you're frowned upon why because the chef wants you to taste his food a specific type of way with specific kind of ingredients and all that stuff same thing with the video game developer they have a specific um way that they want you to play this game they have a specific way they want to tell you this story you know there's a specific way for everything there's some rhyme and reason on why they want to do it a specific way granted not everybody is going to like it it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea but that goes with life not everything is the way that you want it not everything is going to be you know butterfly sunshines and rainbows and whatever the heck you want to call it but yeah. you yeah you, you get what you get enjoy it if it's not your if it's not something that you want to do then guess what look for something else that is going to make you know make you feel happy about whatever you want to do yeah it just it sucks from a perspective though that there are games that you know these fans want to check because that's what i mean realistically like you can't i don't even like calling them disabled people simply because they're gamers just like you and me they just happen to have different challenges and it sucks to think like think, man. <clears throat> think I mean, of it this way. I, I, I guess, and, and this is the way that I see it. And and this is, I guess, because of my personal experience, where you know I almost died at one point. But think of it this way: you, you're like, right? <laughs> okay. So story. <clears throat> so yesterday I got my switch, and my switch is flickering. The screen is flickering, and there's this weird gray line along the front of it, and it's just flickering and flickering and flickering, and I'm like, what the hell? There's no, it's not cracked, it's not broken, nothing is, looks out of place. If anything, it looks like maybe something tapped it or whatever, but it was just odd, super odd. And I'm here trying to fix it, I'm trying trying to mess with it, I end up calling for warranties because it's broken, and you know, my warranty's expired and I'm like, crap, dude, is my extended warranty all this? I'm mad because I think my kid broke it. So I, I'm already like, man, he's going to have to do chores to pay for this and stuff. <laughs> and I grabbed and my first thought after I finally calmed down and I was like, man, I may have to send my switch for repair. The very first thing that came in my head was, fuck, I'm going to miss Cuphead. <laughs> all right? That's what it was. And the reason I bring it up is not to be like, oh, Cuphead, but what if? I'm looking forward to Cuphead and this is all I'm looking for. And God forbid something happens to me today and it leaves me in a situation where I now have a disability. And now one of the things that I've been looking forward to for the past year and a half or year and some change, now I can't check out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that sucks. Like that, that, that really sucks. And in the way that I see it, it's just one of those, like, you know, I, in the, I guess the part that sucks from my end is that I, I see both perspectives to an extent. And it's and it's just one of those like, man, I I feel I do feel everybody deserves the chance to do so. And I personally do think that and, and I congratulate and kudos to the developers that do. And again, I do understand the point that you're making, Ricky, and you have a point is people want you to experience certain things a certain way, but the example that John that, that he used about the the books, you know, like they do audio books and they do things like that. So there has to be a medium, you know what I mean? There has to be a compromise that can serve both purposes. And that's what I would be interested in finding out. What is that? I don't know. It's probably for somebody that's a ton smarter than I am. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, it's there has there has to be a happy medium. But with that said, clearly on the show, we're kind of split. We're we're towing the line in terms of where it should go. So let's go ahead and check in over on Facebook uh, to see what our group has said. <laughs> so I, th- there was one that I deleted. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, listener uh, and Facebook member Jason Jones says, no, leave them as they are. You'll lose part of the feeling of finally beating the that one difficult boss. 
So he he's of that in, encampment of, you know, the, the feeling of action, the satisfaction you get after finally completing your task. And yes, that's great. So that that's where he stands. Um, one of our co-hosts from Control C, one of the other shows that we do here on Geek Endcast, William, uh, also known as Billy on the show. Honestly, the most challenging part is learning the game. The monsters and bosses are very static in their spawn points and attack rotations. Initially, the games are hard. Replay-wise, not so much, unless you're playing New Game Plus. New Game Plus typically allows you to carry over what you've gathered from previous games and 40% plus, 8% for each additional clear isn't that bad until you get more clears. So I'm assuming, because I know him, that he's talking more about Final Fantasy XIV because that's like his, that that's that's his addiction, all right? Final okay. Fantasy XIV. <clears throat> but um, it seems that, I, I, I'm assuming he's suggesting that New Game Plus is a new way of accessibility or maybe he's saying, you know, practice makes perfect. What do you gather from that? I don't. I've heard that. Um, that term I'd ask before. him, but he, if I call him now, we'll be on the phone for a while. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I you mean, mean I'm on the phone and I'm on gaming? Dad, he's been wanting to be on the show for a while. He'll take advantage. You think? <laughs> yeah, I think I, so. I, I, I'm willing to give it a try now. Now I'm curious. Now I'm curious to see what happens. We might do it for another episode. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, what do you? Yeah. What do you think? Because I did ask you what you I'm thought. Actually, I'm actually looking for games plus because that is something that i've heard before i think that may be god a... of war has new game plus for example uh metal gears yes. have new game pluses and things like that so there's multiple games who that do that mm -hmm. but when you think about that that in itself is a mode of accessibility you know what i mean like that is kind of doing exactly what we're asking <laughs> or what you know no, Steve yeah, it is um but they... it but if you're thinking about it that way i believe you only are able to access that information if you're doing like the extreme hard mode of any games once you unlock the you know once you beat the games they open the extra hard levels or whatever and if you're able to go into it with at least that slight of advantage where you're not starting completely from zero you know that makes the game a little bit enjoyable and a little bit you know making it <sighs> It's, it's, it's <laughs> honestly it's it's a hard it's a topic. loaded topic isn't yeah it's, it? it's a hard topic because again just like i mentioned with the game of celeste you know i am from the camp where i personally don't like hard games just because i am still stuck in shakira die twice on the first mission um i still haven't passed it by the way <laughs> so yes i would love to learn the game just like billy says it is one of the hardest things to you know to learn because the he is right the game the monsters everybody is static and they're technically they're doing the same exact thing but i personally don't have the time to learn a game to be able to get to that level so we're dads but, we've covered this on every episode exactly so for me i would love to enjoy your game you know right now like i've said for the little bit that i've played the gameplay on on that game is amazing and i love the visual one and the things that the character can potentially do, because obviously I have not been able to unlock everything. Yeah. But if you make it to where you can make it for more of an entry level kind of person, I'm just here for I, the story. Exactly. The, yeah. So far, the story is good, you know, and I want to enjoy your story, but obviously I'm stuck at a level that I can't progress. So, yes, I can see it from that point of view where okay. I want to enjoy your story, but you're not allowing me. Yeah. yeah, so let's go. We have another one, uh, another comment from Christina Rogers. In my honest opinion, significantly difficult games affect themselves as well as potential gamers. I'm not a quote unquote hardcore gamer, but I can hold my own on shooters, fighters, and racers sometimes. I enjoy watching people play those especially hard, epically hard games, sorry, uh, like Dark Souls. But if the tagline is quote unquote prepare to die, for me, I don't even attempt it. I want a challenge, but I don't want the intense frustration you see when folks play those games. So on the gamer side, how would a game built on a stable franchise title if they make the game damn near impossible to beat, let alone enjoy? If I know the perils of those titles, I don't buy. And then her her and our other listener, James Kindlesberger, have been going back and forth on Facebook uh, on their opinions. James comments, I don't have a problem with developers creating difficult games for the sake of making them difficult. I just won't buy them. I couldn't possibly master a controller scheme when I, lim when I limited in my playing time due to kids and work. So he's... He's talking about basically the same thing you and I have been, and that his preference is for games to have an easy mode because he's a sucker for the story. 
So, you know, then we have another friend, Brandon Bernard. I have too much to say, but short, no easy mode. And then we have um, one of our uh, Facebook members, Carolyn Price, uh, went ahead and gave us a link to a Twitter um, article, which is basically talking back and forth uh, and giving different uh, opinions on them from a uh, user, uh, MRU Suck, uh, which, yeah, M-R-U-S-U-K. So if you want to check those out, that link is over on our Facebook There's a very good chance that, you know, if, if we have more comments and more people going back and forth, we probably will revisit this next week. So if you have something to say, go check us out over at Facebook group uh, and go comment and let us know. Now, before we get on with it, before we end the show, we have each and every single week what we call the Parenting Cheat Code of the Week. Now, this week's cheat code was actually written by yours truly. And let me pick my phone back up because I forgot what I titled it. <laughs> so, transparent as glass. So no bitching next time. <laughs> Damn it. I appreciate you trying, Ricky. I, re- I really, here's the worst part. I really tried. You I just, actually, <laughs> I actually forgot what the title was. I remember that it was transparent as glass, and I couldn't remember what the other words I had picked to title it. So technically speaking, that was your best chance, because I read that almost verbatim. I looked at it, but I recognized it right away. <laughs> No, the second pitching was something I did put in. (laughs) But essentially, um, I've been doing something lately with AJ that has been working um, pretty well, actually. And I think that it's a mixture between his age and the fact that I've been 1,000% clear and transparent with him. Is I've been sitting down with him and talking to him about why we make certain decisions and why we do the things that we do and why when he behaves a certain way, it results in X, Y, and Z. So with that said... I have literally, I sat him down over the past couple of days and I've been like, we've been having issues with him going to bed and actually staying in bed and he'll get up and start wandering around. He wakes us up. He wakes his brother up. Now nobody's sleeping. Everybody's awake. It's like two o'clock in the morning and, every, you know, working all this stuff. Everybody's cranky. And that's been happening. So that's what we were working on is the whole, hey, you got to stay in bed, bud. Oh, but I can't sleep. It's like, it's not that you can't sleep. It's that you don't want to. There's two different things. You lay down for two minutes and suddenly you can't sleep. Nobody falls asleep in two minutes time. So uh, you'd be surprised. Yeah, well, those are the lucky ones. But not me. Basically, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> um, but I've been sitting him down and like, for example, like yesterday, he had a couple of issues. Rather than get mad with him, I picked him up from school today and went on our way home. And I was like, all right, look, I want you to listen very clearly. You're not well, I'm not angry at the moment. You're not currently in trouble. We're gonna have a discussion. What did you do wrong last night? And I sat there and I had a discussion with him where he pointed everything out. And I was like, look, when you do this, it equals this. When you do that, it equals that. When you do this, it equals that. So it's one of those where I remembered when I was a kid, when I started to get, become around that age where I'm starting to be, go toward being a teenager because AJ is 11 right now. So, of course, he knows everything. Um and I remember those days and, and I kind of re- wish that my dad would have taken the time to sit down and talk to me and explain to me why certain things would be the way that they were. Like he would always like the answer I always got was because I'm your dad. Shut up type of thing. You know, it was like because I said so. OK, that's wonderful. That doesn't answer my question. And I feel that the way that his brain works is very similar to mine. And I caught wind of this when we were going out this weekend to go see Shazam as a surprise and he just kept going, where are we going? But why are we going? I don't want to go. Do I have to go? Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? I don't want to go. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we watching? Do we have, is it a movie I want? And I'm just like, AJ, shut up and get in the car. You're going. Whether you like it or not. Right? You're going. Period. You're going to like it. Shut up and get in the car before I change my mind. So it made me realize, dude, he's a lot like I am. I was when I was a child. So it's actually been working pretty well. So I kind of wanted to give it as a cheat code out there. Like, I think realistically, like, you, you really do got to keep an eye on your kids and see what they are because there are a lot of 11-year-olds that would not be ready for something like this. I, I think that currently he's showing that he is potentially ready. And we've been talking a lot about acting his age and, you know, how when you want something, you you need to earn it. And I – so my dad used to talk a lot of metaphors, and I came up with the best metaphor to explain this whole scenario to him. So check it out. This is this is skill from my parents. Skill from my dad. Um, I basically told him, I was like – if you go to the store and you're going to buy something that costs $10, you show up with seven. Do you get it? He goes, no. I was like, why? Because I only have $7. I'm like, okay, but $7 is more than five. That's more than half. 
So that means you get at least half of it, right? No. Okay, so wh why not? Well, because you need $10. Okay. Same thing with you wanting more responsibilities. Same thing with you wanting more liberties. You have X number of criteria you need to meet. And unless you meet it all, you're not getting it. And just like if you have something that's $10, if you pay 15, guess what? You're going to get what you want and you're going to get your change back. Same thing with responsibilities. You do what you need to do. And if you go above and beyond, you're going to get what you want plus extra. And it seems to be sinking in. He's doing fairly well. I guess I'll talk to you guys next week and let you know how it's been working because <laughs> so far, you know, knock on wood, it, it he's taking it pretty well, man. So yeah, I kind of wanted to share that. No, yeah, that's good. Um, I, I'm, we, my wife actually does that a lot more than I do. I will admit it. Um, she actually does sit down, um, with my oldest daughter, and then we tr we do try to explain things to her. Mm -hmm. Um, for example, there was a there was a time that my wife had to travel, um, due to work, and she sat with Zoe, my oldest. Um, and basically spoke to her and let her know, it's like, listen, I'm going out of town. This is the reason why this is what's going on. Um, and we've done it throughout the times. Yes, she is four years old, five years old now. And, mm -hmm. and we've tried it and you can kind of tell that she can kind of get the hints and she kind of understands. So she doesn't become as whiny if we don't tell her and we just say, okay, well, I'm going out of town. You won't see me for a week. But why? And starts crying that I want my mommy, I want my mommy. And by you yeah. speaking to her ahead of time, you know, when the moment comes, yes, yeah, she is sad. But it does help because she now has a better understanding of what's going on. And she understands that mommy will be back eventually and she will not be gone forever. Yeah. Um, same thing whenever she gets in trouble. Um, full disclosure i put her on timeout not too long ago um before the show. <laughs> oh geez because um she's now again she is five so she's now letting more of her emotions come out mm -hmm. you know from whenever she's angry so for example we have a a metal table you know for little kids or whatever and she wanted to put it on the hallway little sister tries to grab the the table you know and they're basically shoving the table back and forth between each other, oh, pulling wow. it back and forth. And I screamed, told her, it's like, hey, stop. You know, you're going to hurt your sister. You're going to hurt yourself. She gets mad and she punches the table. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, no. So at that point, it got me frustrated and I send her straight to her room. And then after a few moments after I calm down and she's crying, I go back in the room and I explain to her, do you know why I put you on timeout? And she tells me, yes, because I punched the table. And, of course, you know, I sit down with and explain to her, it's like, listen, you got to watch out your anger. You cannot be punching things just because you feel like you have to punch them because you're mad. That is not the way of going. Yeah. So I do agree uh, with you, you know, to that extent to where you do have to sit with your kid and talk to them and walk them through situations. You know, that way they understand the consequences of things that can happen if you act a certain way that you're not supposed to. So All right. that's my add on to this cheat code. Sweet. All right. Well, let's go ahead. Before we sign off, Ricky, anything you want to recommend? My eyebrows are natural. <laughs> so for anybody who doesn't know what that means we had a comment over on one of our youtube videos where just flat out ask ricky ricky are are your eyebrows what, what did what did she say hold on i'm gonna pull that up because you don't understand so i didn't even see the comment at first i get a text message from ricky going did, did you did you see what they just they just said it says question <laughs> Question. Ricky's, Ricky's brows are on fleek. He tweez. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead, Ricky. Lift those glasses. Show show us those beautiful eyebrows. I know, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, they, uh, fortunately, they're, I've been blessed. Uh, they're all natural. Um, no, I don't have to tweeze. <laughs> so that's what I would like to share for those. Uh, this now, yes, this I have to work on. I am a little scruffy today, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh god see and then you were supposed to remind me i wanted i wanted to recommend something i can't remember what it was <laughs> damn uh, yeah, yeah. i'll probably recommend the next week <laughs> i'll remember as an editing i'll turn the camera back on and record it <laughs> there you go
<laughs> just let me know. I'll come. I'll put a screen. I still screenshot of me just being like. No. Um. Oh man, I can't. Yeah. No. Sadly, I I cannot remember. But I will say this: Go check us out over on our Facebook group. <clears throat> that way, you can submit uh, topics of discussion for the show. You can submit cheat codes for the show. You can submit opinions for the show. Um, you you can basically just get, uh, talk to us about gamer on the street reviews if you would like to submit a gamer on the street review. Uh, we do got to follow up with some people who said that they wanted to uh, get one together, see how they're doing. But if you want to put one of those together, get with us. We'll work with you so we can get those on the show. Um, and go check us out over on Facebook. Um, aside from that. <clears throat> Make sure to check us out on social media. You can follow Ricky at PickyGamerDot on Twitter. You can find me on VizkZen on Twitter. And you can follow Geek and Cast for this and other shows and news on any of our releases for all of our shows and everything coming up. Uh, you can check out our website at Geek and Cast. Uh, thank you, Ricky, for joining us. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you, YouTube watchers, for watching. We will see you next week. Bye.